going to start with the, the doxology and uh, just singing that to him. So where you are, just praise God for all that he's done. And then we'll see a response to that in Ephesians chapter 1 of why we have reason to praise God every single day. Not just for the blessings of our life that he provides for us in so many different ways and his goodness and his grace. But man, just to praise in all that he's done to save us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heaven.
Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, follow along with me as I read um, Ephesians chapter 1, first verse all the way through the 14th verse. In the original language in the Greek, this is all one sentence. <laughs> Talk about a run-on sentence. Uh, but there are no punctuations in it to end a sentence. So we're, we're just going to read it all the way through verse 14, and I want to come back and just make some brief comments to um, what I meditated on and, uh, boy, just the goodness and the richness of it. Paul begins by saying in verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pause here for just a minute. I want you to listen to these words as though they are directly to you, because they really are. When God the Holy Spirit inspired Paul, carried Paul along as Paul wrote the words that God had given him, we believe that this Bible is inspired by God. It's infallible. It is without error in its original manuscripts. Um, and it, it's not man's ideas. It's not his own ideas interjected in with God, they are the very words of God. And the reason we, we hold to that and why that is so important, because if I, if I have the idea that, yes, it contains God's word, but it's not all God's word, then I have put myself in a position to determine what is from God and what's from man. And then, then the, the whole gamut is open. I can, I can do anything I want to with this word, but we take a, a literal interpretation of Scripture. In other words, what it says is what it means. And we can interpret that and expound on it, but the, the plain, clear meaning is, is what he says. And so receive this in the first person. As God is speaking, it's his word. God is speaking to you and me through his word this morning. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things together to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and you believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Now let's go back. I see seven, um, seven things, if you will, that God did for us in saving us, that when he saved us, uh, these are the blessings, if you will, that are a part of that. And their reason, their cause for us to sing a doxology to him, to give him praise this morning. So I, I want you to be reminded this morning of all that Christ has done for you, that God has done for us in saving us, and may it carry us through the day when we fail, when we fall short, we need to be reminded that God has done this for us, that God has accomplished this for us. When the enemy comes along and whispers in your ear that you're not worthy, that you're not, um, that you're not measuring up, 
to the fullness and the goodness of what you proclaim to be as a Christian, you remember what Christ has done. And I promise you, what it will cause us to do is to give praise to God because of his grace manifested to it. The first thing he tells us in verse 1, uh, verse 3, is that he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That word bless, to, 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 to give favor upon. God has blessed you and I through Christ with every spiritual blessing. Everyone that could be obtained, he has given us those spiritual blessings. Now, these are not the material blessings that we often think of when we think about God blessing us, but they are the spiritual blessings that are, that are obtained through the heavenly places. God has already blessed us in those. The second thing we see that he has done for us in verse 4 is that he chose us before the foundation of the world. Uh, this doctrine of divine election or the choosing, uh, the sovereign choosing of God, I don't understand it, but I know that's what the Bible teaches. I can't wipe it away. I can't say that God doesn't chose. My goodness, why? the question always comes, why did God elect Abraham? I don't know. Why did God elect Jacob over Esau when Esau was the one who had the rightful heir of blessing from, the, from his father? I don't know. Um, that was God's divine purposes. Why, why did God elect Paul? I don't know, because another one had been, had been replaced as an apostle through the drawing of straws, but God said, no, I have another one that I have chosen. I don't understand that, and nor will I ever understand that. I stopped a long time, time ago trying to argue that point. I don't. I just see what Scripture says. I don't have to fully understand God's ways and God's purposes, neither can I ever fully understand. All I know is that sitting on this side, as having trusted Christ, I am thankful and I praise God that he chose me, not because of anything that was good in me, but God chose us. And here he says in this, in this next verse, in verse 5, that he has predestined in his choosing us, he predestined us to be adopted as children of God. We who were fatherless, God predestined us to be adopted as his sons and his daughter, a part of the family of God. The next thing we find that he's done in verse 8, it says that he has redeemed us through his blood. That word redemption uh, has the idea that there is a price that's owed, there's a debt that is owed, and we did not have the means to pay the debt. Every time we sinned against God, every time that we have sinned against the law, there is a record that's been placed there, and we owe a payment for that. But we could not pay it. But God sent his son Jesus to redeem us, to purchase us, to free us from that debt that we owe God. Praise God this morning that Jesus has redeemed us. He's purchased us. We couldn't do it ourselves. He has done it for us. The fourth thing that's following in this in verse 7 is that he forgave us of our trespasses. Forgiving us, not just whitewashing it over, not just acting as if it didn't happen, but that word forgiveness has the idea behind it that he erased any evidence of our violation so that there is no evidence that can be presented in a court of law against us, that evidence even of our sin, our transgression, has been erased in Christ. And so we stand before him forgiven, forgiven of all past sins, forgiven of any present sin, and forgiven of any future sin in Christ Jesus. Now, that's not an excuse to go out and sin and say, well, we've been, I've been forgiven for this, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. No. Paul says we don't, we don't dare to do that. We don't take advantage of God's grace. But when we do sin, we know that we still stand in a right place with him because of the blood of of Jesus. He has unveiled to us, Paul goes on to say in verse 9, 
He's made known to us the mystery of his will. Now that mystery that Paul is talking about is that is that mystery that the Old Testament saints had no idea of how God was going to redeem. But in the fullness of time, God sent his son, Galatians chapter 4, so that he might be a redeeming person for us. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, Jesus Christ. And so he has revealed, he's opened our eyes to that mystery. We didn't open our eyes to the mystery of the gospel. God opened our eyes. We're incapable of opening our eyes to that. But God drew us by the Holy Spirit and opened our eyes so that we might see God's gospel, his plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. And then the next thing that he tells us in verse 11 is that we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purposes of God, who works all things together according to the counsel of his will. We have received an inheritance, an inheritance that will never fade away, an inheritance that will never expend itself, but it is an eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus. And then lastly, he tells us that in verses 13 and 14, for those who have heard the truth, the gospel of our salvation, that he has sealed us with the promised Holy Spirit. This was a new thing in the new covenant. In the Old Testament, we see where the Holy Spirit came upon certain individuals, David, etc., in different times, but did, they did not have the Holy Spirit. For us as believers, the moment that we are saved, the moment that we trust Christ, the Bible tells us that he seals us with the Holy Spirit. He indwells us with the Holy Spirit. We are, these bodies, are a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. He indwells the hearts of believers. And he says here that he has sealed us. That, that word sealed is like an insignia ring where the, where the king or whoever was giving an edict would stamp that in, from wax with their signet ring. He has sealed us in the Holy Spirit as a guarantee, as a down payment, as a deposit for our redemption that we will fully one day see when we meet him in glory. Either meet him by passing in this life and to be absent from the body will be to be present with the Lord, or if Jesus returns in our lifetime, we will see the fullness of our redemption. And he has given us a guarantee. No one wants to lose a deposit. If you place a deposit on a house or a car, it's valuable. And you put that deposit on that and you don't want to lose it. And so you place that deposit there so that it's guaranteed that it will be yours. Listen, he has placed a deposit on us by the Holy Spirit making a guarantee that we are his. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, according to Paul, Romans chapter 8. You see, when he has saved us, when he's placed his Holy Spirit in us and the Holy Spirit indwells us, we are saved for all of eternity. You can't undo that. I can't undo that. Nothing can undo that. No principality, nothing can undo what God has done in saving us. Rest assured today in his glorious salvation that he has saved us. That is reason to give God praise. Can you say amen to that? I pray the Lord blesses you today and he keeps you. I pray that God would give you and me an opportunity today that if we come across somebody in our path, whether it be at work or where we eat lunch, whether we work out, whatever it is, that we would have an opportunity to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart, to share with them the good news of what Jesus has done for us and he's provided for them as well. Whosoever will, the Bible says. And so we don't know those that are chosen, but we know that the God, the Holy Spirit, is drawing others to him. We want to be available to plant that seed, cultivate a seed, or if God would so grace us of being able to witness him save somebody today. Wouldn't that be great? I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Look forward to being with you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.